Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Welcome to a new week. Now listen, God is already gone ahead of you. You know what he said in the book of Isaiah? He says, he will go ahead of us and he will make the crooked path straight. Now, you know what that means? That means you are not supposed to see the crooked path. If someone is going ahead of you and clearing the crooked parts and making them straight, you are not supposed to see the crooked part. Now, if you get to a part that is crooked, what do you do? You pause and ask, Lord, is this the way that you have gone ahead of? You know, so, so if, if, if you've gone into the wrong way, he will redirect your steps. Praise God. And that's why the scripture says, in all our ways, we should acknowledge him. And he is going to do what? Direct our paths. Now, he's not going to direct our paths to find a new way or pattern for our lives. He's going to direct our paths to the place that he has already walked on and he has already gone. So listen, it is just possible. Now, when I say just I mean, really, it is possible to live a life, a stress-free life. It is possible to live a life without worries, without troubles. It is possible. Not because there are no troubles around. But you see, when you follow the Lord day by day, step by step. And how do you do that? Simple what I said earlier. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And allow Him to direct your path. Part. As long as he is directing your path, I'm telling you, the things that are going to cause worries, he's going to make you avoid them. Things that are going to cause you trouble, he's going to make you avoid them. You realize that you're always late for tragedy. You realize that, I mean, you you pass a place and then the next thing you, you hear the news that, oh, that place just passed something, so so and so happened. You, you just realize, but, but I passed there. See, that's how the Lord leads us, praise God. So it doesn't mean there's no trouble in the world. But for you, it's different. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to find out from the Lord what does he want you to do. Now, when I say this, I'm not just saying go and fast and pray. Go, what do you want me to do for my life? No, day by day. You ask the Lord every day. Lord, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to, to how do you want me to go about this issue, Lord? Okay, Lord, I'm applying for this job. What do you think I should say to them? That's how you acknowledge him in everything. And when you begin to do that, he takes the responsibility because you got him, got him involved. He takes the responsibility of directing every one of your parts. How then are you going to experience trouble? You know, I know sometimes, you know, people say, you know, for example, in marriages now, you know, someone will tell you, I prayed very hard before I made that choice. And God spoke to me that that was my spouse, you know, and, and I fasted. If I, both of us fasted and we, we got confirmations and everything, and now you're in crisis. Yes. The fact that God chose for you doesn't mean there, is no, there will be no crisis along the way. But you see the mistake people make. They, they heard from God to get into that marriage, to get into that business. And then when the crisis comes, they begin to look for professionals to get them out of the crisis. It doesn't work that way. No professional can fix what God put together. See? No, they can't because they don't understand the way of that journey. They don't understand it. No school will teach you the ways of God. <laughs> no one. Not even Bible schools, I'm telling you the truth. There are things about God you only experience along the way. And it will take the Holy Spirit. Because he's the only one Jesus said will guide us into all truth. And he leads you step by step. So when you find crisis in a thing, now whether you feel God led you there or not, the moment you find crisis in a situation, pause and talk to the Lord about it. Say, Lord, I, I found myself here and, and I don't know how I got here. But I trust you right now, Lord. If you will tell me what to do, that's exactly what I will do. And he will speak to you. Pray like that and be calm. 
Don't, don't pray, oh God, oh God, save me, oh God, save me, oh God, save me. Oh Lord, I need you to save me. And two people cannot be talking at the same time. You need to be quiet. Make your request known to him. See, confess your faults to him. Oh Lord, I think I made a mistake. Now that's what you think. So whether, whether it's a mistake or not, it's not, it's, not, it's not the issue right now. But that's what you think and you're being honest before the Lord. Say, Lord, I think I made a mistake. I think I've made a wrong turn. See? So, Lord, I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? And he shows you the path to take. He shows you. Listen, you see, when, when, when Isaiah said, our ways are not his ways. Now, that's the truth. See? <laughs> His thoughts, the Bible says, as, as far as the heavens above the earth, so are his thoughts. Now, what does that tell you? As someone who is smart, you should realize that if his thoughts are that high above mine, why don't I relinquish my own thoughts and accept his thought? Can I receive his thought? Yes! How do I receive his thought? His words. Praise God. Wait, you see, our thoughts are expressed through his words, through our words. I'm sitting down here talking to you. I know the thoughts, I know the thoughts in my heart that I want to communicate to you. But how am I communicating them? I don't sit there and say, hmm, now listen, I'm going to communicate my thought to you. All right, get ready. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Receive it now. I don't do that. Praise God. <laughs> you see, now how do I communicate my thoughts to you? Through what I am saying. You hear me, you can reason. And as you hear me, and then the way I communicate my thoughts means I'm going somewhere. I'm leading your mind somewhere. Praise God. So as you receive my words, and you begin to believe it and say, yeah, I, I think that's making sense. Yeah, that's making sense. See, some of the, most, most of the time, the word of God doesn't make physical sense. But you see, when you engage yourself in the things of the spirit, it's what we call spiritual senses. See, remember one time, I think last year or so, I, I talked to you about facts. What we call facts is not what the world calls facts. See, our facts are different. You want, to, you want to deal with this situation? And I said, look, put your facts together. Okay. What facts? Maybe you want to deal with finances. Maybe you need money from God. You, 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 you are in a situation right now. You need a miracle. So how do I go? How do I believe God for a miracle? The first thing you do is you put your facts together. What facts am I talking about? Okay, has God done, has God done this thing before? Okay, I had um, brother so and so share a testimony of how God you know, did this thing, this similar thing for him. And I heard Sister so and so shared. Now, you believe those testimonies. You knew they were not telling lies. You know them. So they were not fabricating stories. Now, that becomes your facts. So you put all these facts together. And say, based on this, this, this. I believe. If I believe God, he will do the same thing for me. Now, based on that fact, you move. And you are going to experience the same kind of miracle, praise God. I've always said this. If you want to see God repeat something in your life, testify about it. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. Testify about it. The truth. I remember one day I, I, I was stranded several years ago. And no vehicle to get to where I was going to. Now, some of you have heard me share this story before. But I want to bring out one aspect of it. And I stood there wondering, what do I do? And then I remember the testimony shared by a, a great man of God, Jerry Savelle, and how he was stranded in the middle of the night with his family. And, and their car had, a, had an issue. And he didn't know what to do. Middle of the night, about 1 a.m. or so, or 2 a.m., on an express road between two cities. Praise God. And he, he, he just stayed in his car and he began to pray in tongues. And, and suddenly, God literally sent an angel to help him that night. Now, I heard that story. And I believed that story to be true. Because I knew he wasn't telling a lie. 
he wasn't fabricating that story. So I, I was in the same situation. I was stranded. And I remember that testimony. And I just said, wow. I said, Lord, I, I said this out loud. I said, Lord, you did this thing for Jerry Sabin. You can do it for me. And then I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, no, I prayed, I prayed a prayer. Like I said, ministry spirit, send a vehicle, send a bus. Caucus was a bus that plies that route. So send a bus to come and pick me. And immediately, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, each time you remember these things, it just, you know what I mean? I, I heard instantly the Holy Ghost said to me, no, rather pray like this. Ask me to send one of the angels to come and pick you. Huh? Okay. Now, what, it, what just happened? Jesus said he will guide you into all truths. So I had a desire based on a fact that, is in my, that was in my mind. Then I expressed my desire to him and then the Holy Ghost took over because he was the one that did it for Jerry Savile. So he who did it for Jerry Savile put the right, he corrected my words. See, he said, send, ask me to send one of the angels to come and pick you. I thought about it. Now I could have gone, uh, angel, come and pick me. No, no. I could have started arguing. But as, as far as the heavens are, so are his thoughts. And he's not going to tell you something that is not possible for him to do. He won't. See. So he told me that. I said, okay. I said, Lord, send one of the angels to come and pick me. I'm not exaggerating. See, I'm sharing this with you now. Let it become your fact. See, praise God. So you use it, you can use it for yourself and get the same result. And, and, and I heard the Lord, you know, and I and I spoke, and I in not up to 10 seconds after those words came out of my mouth. Listen to me, guys. Listen to me. I'm not lying. I say the truth before God. A vehicle drove past me. Uh, I didn't flag it down. I was just standing by the road. A vehicle drove past me, stopped, reversed where I was, and he went down and mentioned exactly where I was going. I said, yes, that's where I'm going. No, he asked me, you're going to Susan's place, right? I said, yes. He said, come on in. And then I got into the vehicle. And then he took me straight to where I was going. You know, I, I always recount that experience. And I, and I, what happened in that car? Because cause my, my, my mind was intact. Everything was right. But for some reason, I couldn't speak. Not that I was trying to, no, 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 no. You, until I came down from that car, my, my, I was thinking about, so do you, I'll tell you what I was thinking. Do you, do you say to an angel, God bless you? Or, or how, do you, how do you greet an angel? You know, those are the thoughts going through my mind until I got to my destination and I came down and I was standing and then he drove up and said bye you see I'm like what just happened because I believed in someone else's testimony it became my fact then I took it before the Lord and the Lord got involved with it by speaking to me see that's when he says rather pray like this now it is the word of god that makes the difference in everything we do so you see it's not just you applying what i applied see what makes the difference see that's why sometimes people People take testimonies and then they say they tried it, it didn't work. And then they wonder. And then they get to that point where they begin to wonder. Maybe that person was even telling a lie. No. See, it is when you take it before the Lord, then his word comes to you. It is his word that gives that thing life. If not, it's just mere testimony or mere story that you cannot replicate. What made me replicate that testimony? was the word of God that came to me from the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Listen, this is going to be an interesting week and I'm telling you the truth because I'll be sharing with you this week on the fulfillment of prophecies. 
the fulfillment of prophecy. What do I do? How do I know that it's time for a prophecy to be fulfilled in my life on the earth? You know, that, those are things we're going to be talking about this week. Get excited. Don't miss any of the broadcast. And God bless you. Step out today with faith and God will do a miracle in your life. Bye-bye.